The Lord bless you, my sweetheart dwellers, with his healing, his wisdom, and his anointing. I'm going to ask your pardon ahead of time because I must put out a message because the Lord is deeply grieved. If you complain that it isn't for you or that you've heard it before, I kindly ask you to take your complaint to the Lord because I'm under the yoke of obedience and this is something he wants spoken. And while I'm writing this, for those who live in Brazil, understand that there's not one of us all around the world who are not guilty of the very same crimes and it never hurts to be reminded. So kindly bear with me, please. And if you know anyone who is doing these things to the body of Christ, please pass this message on to them. All right. Also, we have new believers on this channel and they must be informed as well that to attack other Christians privately in your heart, with or without your mouth, because heaven hears you loud and clear even when your words are not spoken. Or certainly more grievously, if you attack people in public, targeting ministers of the gospel who've given their lives for him, you will be disqualified for the rapture. You will not be raptured. The Lord has told us this over and over again. It is a severe warning. If you want to be taken in the rapture, you cannot be critical of other ministries or other people. This is not an idle threat. These are the words that were spoken to me by the Lord Jesus himself. If you are willfully denouncing a brother or sister, then you have taken the Lord's authority and thrown into your own hands and blasphemed the work of the Holy Spirit. You will not be taken in the rapture. Blasphemy is the act of insulting or showing contempt or lack of reverence for God to religious or holy persons or sacred things or towards something considered sacred or inviolable. So in other words, a brother or sister who have given their lives to the Lord to minister the gospel, that person is holy. And to insult or to attack them is a crime against the Holy Spirit. So this is a stern warning. I will not have your blood on my hands because I didn't warn you. You will be left behind, crying out in agony, while those you denounced are taken into the Lord's arms, and you are left to endure the brutal agonies of the tribulation. Now, it's reported that certain people are putting their messages on the Internet along with their own indictments of other Christians. This is what's going on in Brazil. Please cease and desist. Do not continue to grieve the Holy Spirit of God by mixing what is pure and loving with what is bitter and filthy. The Lord has shown us many, many times Judgment on other souls is like a filthy diaper. When you change a baby's diaper, you put it in the trash. You don't pull it out, play with what's in it, sniff it, and put it in other people's faces. Please do not mix the profane with the holy. Please do not criticize other Christian groups because you are robbing Jesus of the suffering he endured on the cross for each and every member. You are scattering the flock. You are pillaging the stores of heaven by scandalizing other souls who are young in the Lord and don't recognize that what you are doing is wrong. Is it not written, Do not judge or you too will be judged? For in the same way you judge others, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. And why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye, when all the time there's a plank in your own eye? Here the Lord uses the words hypocrite, and he says, you hypocrite, first take the plank out of your own eye, 
and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. That's in Matthew 7. So you will be held accountable for souls that are lost because of your slander. Do you understand the seriousness of this? If a soul leaves a Christian group because they heard that that group was bad, that soul becomes bait for the wolves. In other words, if that soul is stolen from the Lord because of the words of your mouth, you have become responsible for them going to hell. You have blood on your hands, the Lord's blood and the soul's blood. Now, if this sounds harsh, I'm sorry. It is harsh. Ezekiel and I were both guilty of this for 20 years. The Lord withheld his blessings from us because of our grievous sin and fault. The cry of our heart was to minister, but we were disqualified by God because we judged others. That's why my real ministry didn't start until I was 68. It took me that long to really get it. And now when Ezekiel and I talk about something, if we begin to see that we're talking about someone, we stop immediately and repent. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you, along with all malice. Let no unwholesome word proceed from your mouth, but only such a word as is good for edification, according to the need of the moment, so that it will give grace to those who hear. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving each other, just as God in Christ also has forgiven you. That's Ephesians 4. I want you to also understand that if you refuse to forgive a brother or sister for what they have said or done to you, you too will not be forgiven by the Lord. He has told us clearly he cannot forgive you until you forgive others and release them from their sin against you. In the Lord's Prayer, he says, Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. The words of Jesus in Matthew chapter 6, verse 12. Let's move on to what the Lord is really calling us to do. For five days, the Lord has been giving Ezekiel and I the same scripture. I had no idea what it was about. And the scripture reads, I do not ask on behalf of these alone, but for those also who believe in me through their word, that they may all be one, even as you, Father, are in me, and I am in you, that they also may be in us, so that the world may believe that you sent me. The glory which you have given me, I have given to them, that they may be one, just as we are one. I in them, you in me, that they may be perfected in unity, so that the world may know that you sent me, and love them, even as you have loved me. This is the Christian witness, guys. This is what makes us Christians. This is how we will be recognized. This is how we will know that people are authentic Christians. It doesn't matter how profound your teachings are. If you do not have love for your brother, you're just making noise. Your words are not backed by your example in your life. Eventually, those who listen to you will either follow your example of bitterness and be disqualified for the kingdom, or turn away from you, seeking the real Jesus. And I want to make this statement to all YouTube and heart dwellers, to all our listeners. If you hear any criticism of a brother or sister, or group, or any denouncement, that that person has no part in our ministry, they are in no way representing us and you're taking your own salvation and qualification for the rapture into your own hands by listening to them. May God have mercy. 
Again, if anyone criticizes another Christian person or group, they are in no way associated with us. Even if they broadcast our messages, they have no part in us until they repent and are restored to fellowship and unity with those they have condemned. Those of you who have been following us for months, you know better. Those of you who are young in the Lord, this is one critical qualification for the rapture and even heaven. Do not listen to slander or criticism of other groups. It is not of God. We're called to be fishers of men, and each of you have an assignment and a position in holding the huge net that Jesus has thrown over the whole world. Your job is to gather in the fish, the lost, before it's too late. Be faithful to your post. Do not tear the net. Don't drop the net. And don't try to yank it forcefully from the hands of others who are holding it. Cooperate with them. Don't lose one valuable fish, not one. Make sure you work together to bring in the catch. Now I will tell you what's going on here in Brazil. I will pull back the veil for you. The witches in your country have come together to divide you, to cause jealousy, gossip, and division. I have lived in Colombia and Ecuador. I know exactly how they operate. They send demons of jealousy, lying, slander, and those who are weak or injured catch this like a virus and then spread the disease around. When you judge someone, you are cooperating with Satan to bring the kingdom of God down. And it's written in scripture, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the ones who do the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and in your name perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house. Yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. Or in modern day terms, the shofar sounded, the skies parted, and the bride of Christ was taken up into heaven to enjoy the wedding feast with her groom. But those who had been criticizing others were left crying on the ground and not taken to the wedding feast. Please, dear heart dwellers, bring no bitterness into the Lord's heart. Grieve not the Holy Spirit. Repent, forgive, and reunite. Work together. You need each other. Each of you has a role to play. It's very important for your salvation and the salvation of others. Don't ruin the harvest with bitterness. Seek the Lord. Let him heal you and fill you with his glory that you may take the hand of your brother and sister and work together. The Lord bless you, heart dwellers. May he give you the strength to purge whatever is in your craw, whatever you have against one another. May he give you the strength, the wisdom, and the grace to forgive and work together.